the Earth. That massive, powerful, and in so many ways, even scary planet. Yet, it's the most beautiful thing we ever saw in our lives. Mother to us, mother to every breathing creature we know. And the fact that it's just a grain in a massive structure full of mysteries is mind-blowing. See for yourself. This is how Earth looks from the International Space Station. Amazing, right? The distance of the station from the surface of our planet is 408 kilometers. Well, we can easily imagine that. And the Earth still looks giant. So let's fly a little bit further. In this picture, our home is still very recognizable. The photo, called Earthrise, was taken from the moon by astronaut William Anders during the Apollo 8 mission in 1968. Truly breathtaking view. But can we go even further? Yes. This is the Earth pictured from Voyager 1 in 1990. In the photo called Pale Blue Dot, Earth's size is less than a pixel. That's how our home looks from 6 billion kilometers away. And that's how far man-created objects can go. Oh, wait. Actually, this wasn't enough for our space machines. They went even farther. And some probes are determined to do something incredible. Leave the solar system. And today, we'll try to answer the following questions. When exactly will the probes leave the system? Are we in touch with them? Will they ever reach the stars? And is there anything that can keep us from flying outside of our planetary system? Let's find out. Movie Interstellar at some point can make us believe that very soon we'll be able to leave our solar system. And while this idea can be really tempting, well, I should disappoint you. We shouldn't be too excited about that. The thing is, now only two objects created by humans are flying outside of our planetary system. Today, we'll tell you everything about these badass probes and also about the other objects that will soon join them in the Outside the Solar System party. Okay, so there are five man-made objects now leaving the solar system, and all of them are launched by NASA. How did they manage to escape the gravity? Well, their velocity is taking them away from the sun. On their distances, the gravitational pull is already not strong enough to make them come back. Probes already completed their main missions. Four of them were launched in the 20th century. And I should say, they accomplished some extraordinary things. Let's get to know these guys better. First, let me introduce you to the pioneers. Our first hero is Pioneer 10, launched in March of 1972. It has a speed of 45,000 kilometers per hour. Pioneer was the first NASA spacecraft with a nuclear-powered electrical source and the first spacecraft that traveled through the asteroid belt. Moreover, it did the first flyby of Mars and Jupiter. And also, it's the first artificial object which was able to develop velocity that will allow it to leave the solar system. As you see, the name of this spacecraft speaks for itself. It was the first in many things. True success story. Pioneer 10's last signal was received on January 23, 2003. According to NASA engineers, the radioisotope power source of the spacecraft has decayed, so we won't be able to receive any signals from it anymore. Pioneer 10 is now headed to the constellation of Taurus in the direction of the star Aldebaran. It will require more than 2 million years for the spacecraft to reach it. The distance between Pioneer 10 and Earth is now more than 19 billion kilometers. Well, it's sad that we lost the connection with that special one. Enjoy the flight, fella. Number 2. Pioneer 11, launched in 1973 with a speed of 40,960 kilometers per hour. Its main objectives included studying the asteroid belt and the environment around Jupiter and Saturn. It successfully accomplished these missions. 
By 1995, Pioneer 11 could no longer power its detectors. During that year, NASA officially ended Pioneer 11's mission on September 30th, after receiving the last signal from the spacecraft. Now the probe is headed toward the constellation of Aquila, which is situated northwest of the constellation Sagittarius. The distance between Pioneer 11 and Earth is now more than 15.7 billion kilometers. If everything goes smoothly, it will pass near one of the Sagittarius stars in about 4 million years. Hopefully, this probe still rocks out there. And now, our number three, New Horizons. This one has quite an impressive speed, 58,500 kilometers per hour. It's the only probe from this list launched in the 21st century, more precisely, in 2006. New Horizons flew 12,500 kilometers above the surface of Pluto. It's the first spacecraft that explored the dwarf planet. After completing the Pluto flyby in 2015, it changed its trajectory four times and headed towards Arakoth, a trans-Neptunian object in the Kuiper Belt. After that passage, it still has the power to be operational until the 2030s. Alan Stern, the principal investigator of the New Horizons mission, suggests that the third flyby can be done in the 2020s at the outer edges of the Kuiper Belt. Anyway, a suitable object for that is yet to be found. Now the probe is about 6.6 .6 billion kilometers away from the Earth, speeding deeper into the Kuiper Belt. Okay, as you can see, these probes were, to say the least, legendary. But we still have two more left. Let's get to know our main stars. Voyagers. This one is Voyager 2, launched in August of 1977 at a speed of 56,000 kilometers per hour. It also reached Jupiter and Saturn, and then was able to continue its journey to Uranus and Neptune. It still remains the only spacecraft that visited either of these two ice planets. On November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 entered interstellar space. And the most amazing thing, we're still in contact with it through NASA Deep Space Network. At this moment, it's more than 18.9 billion kilometers away from our planet. If nothing happens to it, then in 40,000 years, Voyager should pass near the star Ross 248 at a distance of 1.7 light years. And finally, Voyager 1. This artificial object was launched in September 1977, 16 days after its twin, Voyager 2. Why in that order? Well, the thing is, Voyager 2 had a longer path. Voyager 1, on the other hand, took a shorter trajectory, which allowed it to reach Jupiter sooner. So it appears that the probes were named for the order they would arrive at Jupiter, not the order they were launched. Voyager 1 still receives routine commands and return data. Now it's more than 22.7 billion kilometers away from the Earth. It managed to go further than any other object ever created by a human being. It's the same distance as it would be if we flew to the moon and back around 30,000 times. Back in 1990, engineers turned off the spacecraft's camera to save power. But before that, it was commanded by NASA to turn its camera around and to take a photograph of Earth across a great expanse of space at the request of scientist and author Carl Sagan. Yes, that's how the amazing photo I showed you before, Pale Blue Dot, was created. The phrase was suggested by Sagan himself. Later, he wrote a book of the same name. Voyager 1 is headed toward the star Gliese 445, which is located 17.6 light years from Earth. In about 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will be closer to it than to our Sun. Well, seems like it's going to be one hell of a ride. By the way, you can check the distance of the Voyagers from the Sun and the Earth on NASA's official website. It's updated in real time. Anyway, it's never enough for us, right? We've been fantasizing about flying to the stars from ancient times. So the main question is, can we go even farther in a little time? Can interstellar travel happen anytime soon? Paul M. Sutter, an astrophysicist at The Ohio State University, says that according to physical laws only, it's possible. But there are still a lot of obstacles. Our technologies are still not very suitable for that kind of travel. 
The probes that now leave our solar system were not initially made for that. As you see, with their current speeds, it will take them millions of years to reach any star. But even if we initially sent a spacecraft to our closest neighbor, Proxima Centauri, it would take about 80,000 years to reach it with the current possible speed. What is the possible solution? Well, first we should increase the speed. If a spacecraft achieves at least one-tenth of the speed of light, then we will be able to reach Proxima Centauri in a few decades and even get pictures a few years later. Secondly, we should be able to provide a sufficient amount of fuel. Carrying it on the spacecraft is an option, but it makes the object heavier and therefore seriously affects the speed. Another idea is providing energy to the spacecraft while it travels. In theory, it's actually possible with the use of lasers. Radiation is very good for transporting energy, especially if we're talking about the vast space distances. The object will capture the energy and propel itself forward. But when will we be able to create this kind of laser and spacecraft? Well, currently, we have the Breakthrough Starshot project actively working on it. One of its board members, entrepreneur Yuri Milner, suggests that the first craft can launch around 2036. Given that it will take 20 to 30 years to complete the journey to Proxima Centauri, and then around four years to receive the message from it, I guess some of us have a good chance to become witnesses of that great scientific breakthrough. But before that, there's so much we can learn about space. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about its mysteries. And we'll see you next time.